Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at an amazing tool that we can use to add detail to complex curved objects. So over a few videos, we've had a look at how we can turn symbols or icons or any picture into an SVG file and then bring it into Blender. And we've also looked at how we can sculpt a flag or a banner. So in this video, we'll combine the two together by adding or embossing these details onto a banner. And it's so easy with this tool. In fact, this tool is so powerful not only will it do this really easily, but if I just bring back the background that is doing this, so this is the actual banner that I was sculpting on, you can see we've got the detailing here, and if I actually just go back into my multi-resolution modifier and down the detail a bit and go into sculpt mode, let's just find our cloth brush, there we go, I can actually totally move this banner around. Let's do something like that. So totally change the shape of it, Let's just bring this bit forward a bit somewhere like there, whatever, and go back into object mode and everything's moved with it. That's how amazing this is. I mean, this is just going to save all of the time in the world. And if you are making a banner and you want to make four different versions of it or any sort of undulating shape, to be honest, it doesn't need to be a banner. You can do it in seconds. It's so impressive. So let's get having a look at this. So the add-on that we're going to be using for this is called Flowify by Mark Kingsnorth. It's a really nice add-on, it functions really well, and Mark is actually doing a lot to keep it updated and to keep more things coming from it. And from the sound of it, this is only going to get better and more powerful. So let's have a quick simplified look at how this works in relation to this flag. And then if people are interested, at a later date I'll go and do a more detailed video of how this add-on works. Just so you know, there is a link to this in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means that you can buy this add-on at no additional cost to yourself, and it will help the channel out. So if you were to use that link, it'd be massively appreciated, and it helps keep these videos free. So we're back to our banner, and let's have a look at how this is gonna work. Now, there are some requirements of this in terms of how it's gonna work. So let's go through these one at a time. The first is that we need to have a target. This is gonna be my target, except we have a slight problem here. Our target should be something that is clearly a rectangle, or I guess more accurately, something that's got four clear corners to it. So for example, this shape in the bottom left would work perfectly fine. And if I go into face mode, we can see that this actually isn't a rectangle. It's got these added bits around these corners here. So this isn't gonna quite perfectly work, but that's relatively easy to solve. I'm just gonna copy all of these faces that's Shift and D, and then P and separate it by selection. So I've now got this object that's behind. Now, I'm just gonna fix some of these edges. I just need to make sure that these have got a crease. So I'm gonna shift and increase those. And now we can see that is perfectly rectangular. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this solidify modifier, just because I don't need it. I've got my original banner that is behind this which is what we actually want to end up as the end result. But we need this point here, so I'm actually gonna hide this banner, and this is gonna be my target surface that I want the objects I'm transferring to hit. The other thing we need is something that's gonna create a source grid. Now, in the video where I created this, as I made the banner, I made a copy of it as it was just a plane. Now, this means that I know that this is exactly the same size as my banner, it's just that my banner's been deformed. Now, you don't need this to be exactly the same size perfectly, but bearing in mind that the proportions here are gonna influence the proportions as they appear on my target object, this source grid is best to have as close as possible. Do note as well that in terms of the faces, this is just one single face, or it could be subdivided if you want it to be, and it will still affect a subdivided face perfectly. The final thing I need is my source object the thing that I'm going to put onto this surface. So we'll start with this detailing that effectively is gonna be an inset line all the way around the outside. So what I'm gonna do is just take this shift and D it. I'm gonna rename this, let's F2 and call it detail, just so it's easy to find. And I'm gonna S to scale it in a bit. So maybe there, let's S on the X as well so it's relatively even. Let's go with about there. And then I'm going to go to face mode I to inset it a little bit, let's have it about that thick, and then delete that face. So that's what I'm gonna want. Now, I'm also gonna A and then extrude this out, so we've got it somewhere about there. And we need it however much we want it to stick out. 
In fact, I'm gonna actually G and then Y that back a little bit, just so we've got a little bit of overlap, so it's gonna make my booleans easier. Now, the other thing is because this is gonna be flexing onto this target surface, at the moment we've got a problem with this, and that is that it's got very limited geometry. So what I'm gonna do is Control and R, and just scroll up there, and then I'm gonna to come to each face in turn, Control and R, and I'm just going to up this, so we've got a decent number of vertices. So I'll just do this on the other edges as well, and then I'm just gonna symmetrize to speed this up using Mesh Machine. But if you don't have Mesh Machine, you could easily just do this manually on each of the different edges. But essentially, we just want lots and lots of faces so that this is going to be able to deform quite nicely on this object. Then, this is so easy to do. All we need to do, in fact, actually, I'm just gonna G and then Y this forward a bit so it's easy to see on one screen. But all we need to do is select this, which is gonna be our source object, what the object we want to copy, right click, and then Flowify. Then on the grid, or what we call the source grid that it's attached to, I can just click on one of the corners. Notice I can click whichever corner I want. This just helps it relate it to the object it's going to. So I wanna click on this top right-hand corner, and then I can select it to go to the top right-hand corner on the other one. And then that is gonna create or transfer our source object over to this face. It's that easy. Now, you'll notice that it's still got that overlap that I spoke about, and actually we can move this around. So for example, if I S and then Z and shrink it in, it'll shrink it on both. Or G and Z are up, it'll do it on both. And as opposed to, let's say something like a shrink wrap modifier, where you're never gonna get this perfect proportional distance around each edge. This works fantastically. I'm just gonna undo that so that we've got it where we want it to be. Now this will then work with icons as well. I've got the icon that I made in a previous video. So let's just bring this over where we want it on our surface. And again, we can do exactly the same process, except for now we're gonna have a slightly bigger problem with adding some geometry onto this. Now, luckily, HardOps does this really easily. We could do this with a knife tool or any other way of slicing this up if you want to, but I'm gonna use HardOps because it's so quick and easy. So let's Q, Mesh Tools, and then Dice. Let's do it vertically first. Scroll up to get lots and lots of geometry. Click, and we can see now that we've added lots and lots of faces here, and then Q, Mesh Tools, Dice, and then we'll do it horizontally as well. So now we've got all of the geometry we need. We could have made it more dense than that if we want to. And again, what we do is right click, Flowify. This time I'll just click the top left edge and relate it to the top left edge over there. And there we go, our source object placed onto our source grid and then transferred over to our target face. And what that means now is I can just hide that target face and bring back my full banner with its thickness and I can just boolean those together, or I can move these around, decide where the best place is, and I just love the idea that I can actually set out my banner as fully as I want, or maybe a shield, or whatever you want it to be, on a nice, clean, flat surface. It's really easy to work out where I want everything, and then I can bring it over to my fully deformed banner, or shield, or anything like that. And this isn't limited just to this use, it's really nice to use on hard surface as well, but I don't think I found anything that does this as nicely for banners. And like I said, we could do this with the shrink wrap modifier. This one would be an absolute nightmare to do. We could with the icon, but it's definitely not gonna be as easy to place as this. And I actually don't think it will get as good results where everything maintains its proportions to the rest of the icon as well as this. So thank you, Mark Kingsnorth, for this wonderful add-on. Honestly, I cannot think of a better spending of $15 than being able to do this so easily and in such a carefree way. If you did find this useful, please do hit that like button. It's such a simple thing to do, but it really does help out the channel. If you'd like to see a video going through this add-on in more depth, please do say in the comments section. There are lots of other tips and tricks for using this and some other really nice practical uses that I think would be interesting to cover. And if you are interested in purchasing this add-on, as I said, the affiliate link in the description will take you right there and it doesn't cost you any extra, but it does help the channel out. Have a good day, guys.